Let's talk about titrations. They are my favorite thing to teach. Unfortunately, um, we don't get to, but I will, um, as soon as you make it back to my classroom, I will show you a titration. Um, they are the most important experiment to learn um, because they are the most common uh, um, analytical technique in chemistry. So it starts with a, uh, the idea is to determine the concentration of this right here. We know the volume of this because we can measure it in a graduated cylinder or whatever you need to to measure volume. That's not hard. Now the burette has markings on it so we can measure the volume that is in a burette and we also know the concentration of what we put into our burette. So if we know the volume, we know the concentration of a base right here and then we can determine the concentration of an acid in here or vice versa. So uh, this stuff is called the titrant right here and this stuff is called the analyte right here. Now we call it, we put it in a burette, we hold it on a ring stand that usually has a burette clamp right here. And this is called a stopcock, this is where you turn and it will let you um, let out maybe a drop at a time or a stream at a time if you want. Normally we will uh, stir these automatically because stirring is very important in this kind of thing or you can just manu manually swirl, swirl it. So uh, we can titrate. Um, when we do this we can plot these curves, these pH curves versus um, the volume of base that is added right here. So if we started out with just acid down here and it only had acid and then we're going to add some base to it in this burette. What will happen is the acids pH the, will be low and then as we gradually add it, add base, the pH will, gen will gradually rise. And it will gradually rise until it very sharply rise. And when it very sharply rises, this is, called, this is where it jumps and it crosses what we call the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where the moles of acid and the moles of base equal each other. Sometimes called this stoichiometric point because uh, th this is we're going to use stoichiometry for this, and this is uh, very key for this. Now, once we cross that point, the the solution that's in that flask now is all is mostly base now. All the acid has been neutralized. So um, here it was mostly acid, and now here it's mostly base. Now again, this is a strong acid with a strong base. Note that the P equivalence point is at 7. And the pHs are below 1 and then above 13. Now, um, now when we titrate a strong base and a weak acid, now the base is stronger than the acid, right? So uh, it will, the acid will start out a little bit higher with a little bit higher pH, um, maybe about 3 and the equivalence point will be around 9 right here. Now we'll end up with a kind of a flatting, flattening curve right here and important information can be withdrawn from this in your second year chemistry class but we'll move on and we can see an equivalence point here. And then a strong acid and a weak base will look like this. Now um, since the acid is stronger than the base the equivalence point will be a little bit lower than 7. Okay. So that's kind of, you know, how you can do that. All right, now if we have a diprotic acid, that's something like H2SO4. That's a diprotic acid. That means it has two protons, so it's H2SO4, or sulfuric acid. So uh, one proton is pulled away, or one hydrogen is pulled away, and then another hydrogen is pulled away. That's why we have two equivalence points right here. So uh, that looks really cool um, whenever you, uh, that actually works in a lab. Now the equipment we use for this is burette, and the um, and reason why we use it is because it's very precise. Nothing else, no other piece of equipment is as precise as this, except for maybe the analytical balance. Uh, you can get four significant figures off of this, all right? So um, by determining the reading of the burette, you need to make sure that you, me you measure from the bottom of the meniscus. And burettes are also numbered a little differently because they're backwards. So you have to count down. You don't count up like you normally do. So if we have 42, this is 42.1, 42.2, and then 42.3. 
So we will call this 42.30, all right? Remember, you must add that approximated digit. If it's right on the line, call it 42.30. But the idea is you must get four sig figs out of that. Now, um, we'll skip these steps, but you can pause and read on your own. So when we perform the titration, we are going to add, um, measure the volume of what's in our analyte, and we're also going to add some indicator. It's going to make it a very bright, vibrant color, um, and we'll get to more on what, choosing the proper, proper indicator. And then normally we'll have our burette. Now normally this is very colorless. Um, I don't know why it's orange in this picture. Um, and then we will add it to our, um, and we'll note the volume of this right here. Then we will add it to um, add the the titrant to our solution, and the little drops will start to change the color of the analyte, but um, then it, they should go away pretty quick. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing will just change color right away. And that is the point that we should stop. That is our final reading. Once we've done that, we take the difference between the initial volume and the final volume. And that is our total volume of um, titrant added. So it's pretty great, right? Um, so that equivalence point that we talked about is uh, where the moles of acid equals the moles of base, right? So that was the point on the graph that we saw. Now the end point is where the indicator changes color. So we want to choose um, an indicator that has an end point approximately the same as the equivalence point. So let's flash back to a strong acid and a strong base. We have um, strong acid, strong base has an equivalence point of seven. Now a strong base and a weak acid, now this equivalence point is a, is a nine, and this equivalence point is a little greater than five, right? So let's choose indicators for those. Well, if I had a pH of seven, um, I would want an indicator that changes color at 7. So probably bromthymol blue is going to be my indicator. And then an indicator changes about, what, a little le greater than 5? Maybe methyl red? Maybe that could be a good one. And then an indicator that changes at 9, I should choose phenolphthalein. All right? So I have all of those in my stock room, and we would use all of those if we needed them. Um, now, universal indicator is a combination of all the indicators we've shown before. I love universal indicator, but it is not good for titrations because you cannot actually see the pure pH. Um, it is most useful in, um, in just a demonstration just to show young um, chemistry students what it looks like. Well, let me show you an acid-base simulation of a titration, all right? So uh, let's try to um, titrate a weak acid versus a strong base, which means we'll put a strong base in this burette. So we're going to fill the burette with base, and we are going to put an AOH in it, and we're going to put vinegar in our, um, in our flask. So that's going to be great. Well, I just happen to know the phenolphthalein is the best indicator for this because the end point is going to be about 8, and that is about where we want to be. So um, now what we are going to do is once we have put our indicator in here, the indicator is actually colorless when it's an acid. So uh, there is indicator in there. You just can't see it. Now this little stir rod right here is continuously stirring on and on and on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cheat. I know that I can put 19 milliliters in here um, and still be just fine. So I'm going to, if we add 19 milliliters, whoop. all right. So if you, once we pass once we can tell we've, we're getting close to the end point because it's still colorless down here at the bottom. But as I add more drops of base, you can tell that it's starting to change. So I'm going to add some more drops of base and I'll probably fast forward. These titrations require a lot of patience.
Oh, all right. Ah, oh, dang. I just passed it. So, let's see. Could I, could I back up? No. Oh, you know you what? You can't back up, can you? That is just too bad. So, <laughs> I just passed the endpoint. I went a little bit over. Um, it looks like it was about 20.62 milliliters. Um, and that is exactly how much was added. Remember, we started at 50. It looks about 20.62 milliliters was added right here. And it turned very, very bright pink. Now, what you would want is that very, very light pink kind of right in the middle. That is exactly where you would be at that equivalence point. So that's how you would do that. Um, we'll worry about the, the uh, calculations in your second chemistry course.